What is up, y'all? Welcome to this episode of the Dreamers and Action Takers podcast. I am excited about this episode because this episode is all around preparing for the increase. How do you prepare for the increase? What does that even mean? Well, you know, most people talk about like, yeah, $10,000 a month, $100,000 a month, million dollar years, but nobody talks about the fact that their preparation that it takes to get there. And it's more than just selling new clients because there is a mental preparation, but then there's also literal work that needs to be done to be able to have the capacity, to have the systems, to have everything to sustain the increase. Okay, so we're going to be talking about that. I have a couple of different stories to share with you about what preparing for the increase can look like for you, what it's looked like for me over the past couple of months and how to do it. And as always, I'm going to have a couple action items for you to finish up with and for you to take into this week. So I'm going to jump in and get started. And I'm currently recording this. It's May 23rd. And in February of this past year, February, 2022, I felt a significant shift happen in my business, felt the shift happen in my business. And it was like, it's time to prepare. And it wasn't like I knew like in 30 days, like this was going to happen, but I felt this shift and I was like, prepare for the increase. Okay. Just like as seasons change in like the earth, like fall, winter, spring, summer, it was like a season changed in my business. And it was like, you need to start preparing more is coming. You need to start preparing. And I was like, okay, what does this look like? What's happening? And so I think that my mindset before a while was just that like, oh, like things were going to come. More people were going to um, want to join the program. More people were going to join my business. It was just going to happen. And then I would prepare after. But what I learned a couple of years ago was like, no, I have to prepare for it. I have to get ready for the opportunity and go and seek out those opportunities. Okay. So just like in your business, you know, there are seasons where you are heavily planting seeds. You were heavily watering, heavily talking to people, building up, nurturing, adding value. And then there are seasons where you are harvesting that. You're looking at all of the work that you've done and you're harvesting the results of what's happening. And then there are seasons where you are going back and you are doing client fulfillment. You're talking to them, all of these aspects. And farmers know that there are different seasons. Farmers are very aware that there are different seasons in the natural Yet I think sometimes as business owners, we forget that there are natural seasons in our business too, and we want to skip over some of them, okay? But what if you are expectant for the seasons? Like just before summer comes spring, a lot of time in spring is like when you're planting. So you know, before you're going to get those next five clients, you need to be talking to 25 people because you close five out of every 25 people. So what is it that you can do right now to prepare for the increase? So when I heard that, what it looked like for me was a couple different things. One of them, so you use Kajabi for, for all of my, um, my website, all of my, use it for my email platform, everything, my business for like client fulfillment and marketing. And I was on the basic Kajabi plan and I needed to upgrade. And plus I was tapped on all the users and it's like $50 more a month. And I was looking at it and I knew that I needed to upgrade my Kajabi, but it was like something inside me was like, no, like I can make it work. Like I can make it work without upgrading it. And what I felt in that moment was like, prepare for the increase, prepare to have more courses, prepare to have more people on your team, because that means you're serving more people. Prepare to need to have this upgrade. Don't do it out of a sense of necessity, but prepare for the increase. So I upgraded it. And then I started asking the question of my goal this year is to become a seven figure CEO. So make seven figures in my business, which means that I've served a lot of people. I've helped a lot of people reach their goals. The money is just kind of an indicator of that. Not kind of, it is. It's just an indicator of that. I started asking myself the question of how would a seven-figure CEO handle this? 
And there was a day where it was just kind of like one of those days where like the crap was hitting the fan, like everything felt like it was going wrong. And it was like, my phone fell in water. My, um, one of my podcasts uploaded wrong. And so it was like the intro covered the outro. It was like one of my team members, like we were just working on a lot of different things and there was a lot of questions coming up. My internet wasn't working. Videos weren't uploading. My, um, I couldn't even film the next module. It was one of those days where it was literally like everything that could go wrong. And then some things that I didn't even think about that could go wrong went wrong. And I had the best attitude through it. And it was like, all right, I'm good. I'm good. Got some feedback from somebody that like wasn't, I would have preferred not to get. And it was all because I had the mindset of like, this is all working out. This is my opportunity to increase my capacity and to grow in what it is that I'm working on. And it's like, how would a seven figure CEO handle this? Also, when I'm at seven figures, I'm going to have problems and things that come up. I think that one of the most toxic things that's happening right now on social media with more people who are on social media is the fact that they're not talking about all of the other things that are happening. There are a lot of coaches out there who are talking right now just about the fact of like manifesting and calling things in, but they are not talking about the other side of that. Because there's this pendulum that happens where it's like for every good thing, something else comes to equal it out. And it's like, yeah, like that's not exactly the most fun thing to think about or to talk about, but it's true. Like there will be aspects, there will be things that come that are challenges and struggles in your life and in your business. So how are you preparing for it? So this is how I started looking at like challenges and struggles in my business. I was like, oh, this is just increasing my capacity. This is just teaching me how to handle more problems as they come up. I'm like, ah, this is awesome. Cool. These are all just learning lessons. These are all just opportunities to continue to show up. Instead of being like, oh my gosh, this is the end of the world. Oh, in fact, today... I was writing content because I write content. And then Michaela, who's my incredible assistant, um, she's the one who schedules all of it because there were a lot of times where like I would write it and then it would never get scheduled. And so I saw that as me being a bottleneck. So I was like, cool. Michaela knows that it's her task every week to schedule these. And now I have accountability to actually write it and finish it because if I don't, then she can't do her job. So anyways, that's another podcast for another time. But She was scheduling it and I, or I was writing it. And as I was writing, I was like, what if one of my new affirmations is the fact that I make a lot of mistakes and I learn an exponential amount each and every time I was like, I like that. I can do that. I can handle that. Like I learn an exponential amount every single time I make a mistake. Every single time I'm like, dang, now I know I'm not going to do that again. I learned so much, which is amazing. And to being able to look at it from that aspect of like, I learn a lot every time I make a mistake. I'm preparing for the increase. I'm preparing for more, okay? So what's another way that I was able to prepare for the increase? What's another way that this looks like? It's listening to coaches and mentors. And I think that looks, for me, that looked in two different aspects. It was listening to the aspect of like, I have a coach and I have mentors in my life. So listening to the advice and the feedback that they give me and executing on that, because who here has ever gotten advice and they haven't executed on it. So it's that aspect, but then it's also, that's the things that are going in my head and going in my mind. Because if I notice that like anxiety starts to come and pressure starts to come. There are all these negative feelings that are preventing me from showing up as my highest self. I always take a second and I'm like, what have I been consuming lately? The majority of the time it's been, I've been consuming more than I've been producing. And so right now I don't watch TV and every single day I'm scrolling less and less. I need to look for other people for research. I don't need to 
go and see what other, what is happening with other people. If I'm on any social media platform, it is for a targeted reason. And that is to engage with other people it is to connect and to engage with them, I'm not scrolling. And so I noticed if I have anxiety, it's because I started scrolling a lot and I started listening to other things and other people instead of motivational talks, instead of the mentors that I have online that have no idea that I exist. They have no idea who Mary Diacetus is. But I started listening to them. I started listening to podcasts that feed my brain. I started learning more. Or I just turn off all devices and I go on a walk and I get off of technology. Because there's so much value in truly getting off of technology. Being steps outside. The dream. Oh my gosh. Being in nature. It's one of the best ways to think. Just allowing yourself to think and strategize. Or just be silent. Okay. And the last part is hiring a team. Now there are some of you who are like, I'm not in a place to hire a team. That's fine. What if you decided to hire one of your kids? What if you hired one of your kids to do one or two things? Maybe it's even something around the house. What if it's time for you to hire a assistant or a VA? The first person who I hired, I think I hired them for like $400 a month. And my profit margins were huge with this. And it was to do social media. Like they were creating some of the posts for one of my clients. This was like four years ago, three and a half. And they took so much off of my plate by the fact that I didn't have to write the content. So being able to hire, taking those steps, being able to know what it is that you need to delegate and asking for it. Okay. And again, it depends on where you're at. Some of you who are listening to this right now, it is time to hire on a sales team member. It's time to hire on somebody to do your social media. It is time to hire on something that you are not good at. Instead of you learning your weaknesses, hire somebody else out where it is their strength. It's the who, not the how. And some of you, maybe it's just having your kids do something else around the house. Like I'm talking about both ends of the spectrum. Okay. But being able to know that you don't need to do all of it because you're in a process right now. You're growing in your building and you're allowing yourself to have all of the aspects of that. So grow and build and prepare for the more because the more the increase is never going to show up if you don't prepare for it, if you don't allow yourself to have the season of growing and building and learning these new lessons. And so I told you that in February, I felt this. So I felt this like new season of like, okay, like it's time to prepare for the increase. It is time to do more like, all right, I'm preparing. I'm looking at these different things. And I believe it was end of February. Maybe it was in March. I hurt my ankle. So part of what I was doing when I was like preparing for the increase is like, I was getting out, I was running more, I was exercising more. And in one of my runs, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden I had like sharp pains at my ankle. I did not stop. I ended up running for like two and a half more miles after it, which is like foolish. It was foolish. And I go home and I'm like, my ankle really freaking hurts. Like I'm limping, like there is a lot of pain on it. Um, even when I didn't have any pressure on it. And I think it was very interesting because the day after my ankle started hurting was the day after I had made the decision. I decided like, okay, I'm done preparing. I'm done preparing. I'm just, I'm ready for the increase to be here. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going through, I'm done. I'm done preparing. I'm ready for this to happen. And I don't know if this was the direct correlation of me just making the bullheaded decision that I was done preparing and I made my decision, even though I'd heard that this was a season of preparing, I'd stepped into, um, all right, no, I'm done. This is what I want. I'm ready for the increase to be here. But I do know that it was a very quick turnaround 
of both happening. Do know that I didn't twist my ankle. I didn't step on anything. And even if it was just this reminder, but it was the reminder that it takes time to get to where you want. But look for the wins. Allow yourself to be able to see what's coming. So yes, like count the wins. That's number one, because there will all be wins and progress. This, even I told you like hiring a team, that's a win. Delegating more out to your kids, that's a win. Me upgrading my Kajabi, that's a win. Like all of these aspects are wins. But then on the other hand, there's also the aspect of enjoying the journey, enjoying the process. So it's this fine balance. And I think that there are times where we like get out of alignment and it's like, oh, I'm coming back into alignment. But it's this process of enjoying the journey, enjoying what we're doing and where we're at, but also working towards more, working towards your goals, what you really want and being able to be aligned with the vision and trust the process of the fact that it's coming. Like stop crying, it's coming. And so what does prep look like? You may be asking like, okay, like you talked about your prep. You talked about the fact that it's not just overnight. Slow down, enjoy it. What does prep look like? Okay. It looks different for you in your season. And I'm thinking what are some of the things that I thought about was like the aspect of prep and what it's looked like in my life. A couple questions to ask yourself is one, if I got 10 new clients today, 10 new clients were like, here's my credit card. I'm ready to work with you would you be able to handle those 10 new clients? Would you be able to handle it? Or would it literally crush you? Okay, that's the first question. The second question is, if it would crush you, what aspect would it be that you don't have a sales process lined up to be able to take it? Is it the fact that you don't have a contract or invoice set up? Is it the fact that fulfillment Is it your team? Whatever aspect of it that is and takes into filling it. Okay. Maybe it's even maybe when I said 10 new clients today, you were like, that's impossible. That's not happening. Okay, that starts with your mindset. Let's start with believing that it's possible for you. Because if I said that and you weren't even able to believe, if you weren't even able to dream, that is the absolute first place to start. Okay, so look at your mindset, look at your strategy, look at like the structure and operations of your business, look at the sales and look at client fulfillment. You will see like which one of these do I feel like would be hindering, and then start to diagnose. What does it look like? Where can I fill in here? And make a list of what the next step is for you and start working towards that. The number one thing in every single business is always going to be marketing. Because if you don't have marketing, then you don't have clients. So being able to have marketing, increase your marketing, but then there's a lot of other things that happen with that as well. So be aware of it, start to diagnose and take those next steps while you're preparing for the increase, okay? So if this resonated, if this was for you, I wanna be able to hear, take a screenshot, listening to this episode, post it on social media and tag me, letting me know what area you're gonna be preparing for the increase. How are you preparing? What does it look like for you? I'm so excited for you to be able to prepare for the increase, prepare for more, and see what that next step is for you. All right. So make sure to subscribe, like, share with a friend, all of the good things, and definitely take a screenshot and tag me. I would love to be able to see. Okay. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.